God damn it. What a way to start the new year. At this rate, I'll be dead by Easter. Quiet down, Agent Jones. You're on the clock. Quiet down? Ha! <laughs> you, you have any idea what you've done? I'd be half naked in Havana right now if you hadn't shown up. Soaking up some rays, surrounded by a harem of bikini queens, a mojito in one hand, and a seafood slathered Havana style pizza in the other. Agent Jones, don't let him take control of the conversation. The moment you let your guard down, he'll strike. And no red, remember? It's open. Come on in. You have questions for us. That's why you're here, isn't it? Thank you. 
Mr. Morgan, before we question you, allow me to first read you your rights. Anything you say may be used against you in a court of law. Please keep that in mind as you speak. Do we have permission to film this? Hmm? Don't worry, my fairy. They're free to do whatever they like. Something wrong, Mr. Morgan? <clears throat> I'm FBI Special Agent Aaliyah Davis, and this is- Simon Jones. An analyst from the Boston branch. He's been monitoring us for years now. Oh, uh, hi. Seriously. A southern belle and a lonesome loser who can't catch a break. Quite the uncanny duo. You'd be the perfect stars for the latest video game. Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> How many years has it been since someone came to chat with us. Oh, but don't ask me about my fairy. That's a private matter. It's hard to tell what he's thinking, but my eyes can't be deceived. If he's hiding something, it'll come out in his face. Excuse me, Mr. Morgan. But would you please refrain from consuming that while we speak? I'm talking about... Yes, that. <sighs> you don't need to worry about us. Don't get in our way, and we won't get in yours. Unfortunately, questioning doesn't work like that. Our data needs to be consistent. Now please, put out that stinking indulgence right this minute. If we say no... Then I'll put it out myself. Using force. Whoa, whoa, Aaliyah! This is Morgan's house. Besides, it's legal in Massachusetts for individuals to consume cannabis in the comfort of their own homes. And I mean, come on. It's medicinal. Exactly. You solved many difficult cases across your career, utilizing your own unique M.O. You've expertly cracked cases that were otherwise thought to be unsolvable. According to our records, after joining the FBI in 2002, you quickly solved two drug ring-related kidnapping cases. In 2003, you solved the Inside Out Flesh Skinner case, in the suburbs of Pittsburgh. In 2004, the Jeffrey Dahmer wannabe case in Milwaukee. And also the stuffed human collector case in St. Louis that very same year. Then, in 2005, you coincidentally happened to solve the Lise Clarkson murder case while on vacation. You went on to solve many other cases after that, all of them seemingly inexplicable. 
Did you really solve these cases all on your own? There are no records of you using a wide-scale investigative team or working with anyone else. How did you ever accomplish such monumental feats all by yourself? It was all thanks to our talented partner. Partner. The FBI files show no record of you ever working with a partner. Do you mean you worked with some sort of unofficial partner or an outside confidant? Our partner is our partner. We've always worked together. Besides, Belle, you're forgetting one important thing. After the St. Louis case, we stopped by a diner on our way home and caught Thelma and Louise, two highly sought-after fugitives. <laughs> Francis Zack Morgan. He was once an FBI special agent, an extremely talented one, at least that's what they tell me. Perhaps he was a little too talented. Hey, Belle. Why are you dressed so handsomely? What are you talking about? The thick black accessory wrapped around your neck. That's a male necktie. The color black represents confidence and interest in the self. And your decision to wear a male tie symbolizes your declaration of war against a predominantly male society, or perhaps it's a psychological barrier meant to hide the weakness that dwells deep within your psyche. We admire your bravery. I thought you retired from profiling. <laughs> Bullseye, huh? You're an easy one to read. In order to think with society, a man must first gouge out his eyes and cut off his ears. Don't judge a book by its cover. For someone who's supposed to have been one of our best, you've got an awful eye for people. Or did all that smoke and kill all your little gray cells? Okay, Aaliyah, that's enough. She's smart, but she's also more of a shrew than she lets on. Agent Jones, that's sexual harassment. <laughs> so, Belle, does that barrier of yours also protect you from violent criminals? <laughs> He's more dangerous than I thought. I can't read him. I'll just have to assault him head on with questions then. First, I'll try using the files on the table to shake him up. That chessboard looks rather old. And you can't even buy those ivory pieces anymore. Right. They were banned by the Sites Treaty. That was made in France in the 1900s. We know it's in bad taste, but the weight of the ivory just feels so good in our hands. You play chess alone? Is that a crime? No, but it's a hard game to enjoy when you're all by yourself. He's probably just replicating famous games. Or trying to solve problems from a chess workbook, right Morgan? I may not look it, but I'm actually a bit of a chestnut myself. When I was in school, I used to pour over every issue of Chess Life, the magazine published by the U.S. Chess Federation. Well, unfortunately your guess is completely wrong, Agent Jones. He isn't replicating a famous game, nor is he solving workbook problems. There isn't a single chess book to be found in this apartment. 
and I didn't find any chess-related websites in his internet history. He was simply playing chess, all alone. So, what's wrong with that, Belle? I don't understand it. How could a single human being seriously play as both sides? You just publicly confessed to stealing personal data. Seems like that's a much bigger problem. Oh no. Everything was done in a perfectly legal manner. We simply happened to intercept a handful of data being sent out from an unknown origin. Ooh, now she's really trying to scare us. Did you hear that, my fairy? Serious nightmare fuel. Mr. Morgan, may I ask you a question purely out of curiosity? If it makes you uncomfortable, just let me know, and I'll retract it. Belle, what's wrong? You sure put a lot of effort into that approach. It's a question about death. About this body? Are you afraid of what's coming? Think carefully about why we're smoking this, then ask us again. Honestly, we're not afraid. Rather, we find it intriguing. Intriguing. <sighs> Have you ever been to the Grand Canyon in winter? No. In the dead of winter, the Grand Canyon is terribly cold. Colder than you could imagine. A cold that no photograph could ever express. The sun. <laughs> Powerless. And the temperature drops below zero. Right in the middle of the day. Meaning? <laughs> Meaning. You can't really understand something until you experience it for yourself. If you want to learn more about us, you need to gain more experience, Bell. Do you remember the homicides that took place in Lucare, Louisiana in 2005? We... solved that case. Your report states the following. By coincidence, you encountered a serious incident in a town you visited while on vacation. You then decided to steal the right to investigate from the local law enforcement and took over the case. After several more homicides, you managed to apprehend the perpetrator. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> we stole the right to investigate from them. Just as you said. It all started when the body of a 16-year-old girl was discovered. You arrived in Lucare immediately after that, didn't you? We just can't seem to keep ourselves away from dead girls. Did you really visit that town just to take a vacation? We don't know. If you already have the report, then we suggest you read it, Belle. Either way, that case is closed. Closed? You sure about that? Don't you think this puzzle is still missing some crucial pieces? <laughs> Come on. No need to beat around the bush with us, Belle. They found Lise Clarkson's body. It was hidden deep within the Clarkson Food Delivery Service's cold storage warehouse. 
After 14 years, we finally discovered the body of the very first victim. Do you know what this means? That's why we're here. The first victim in the case he solved, Lise Clarkson. And this is a photograph of what she looks like now. How will he react when he sees it? We're pleased that her body turned up. Deeply pleased. You claim to have closed this case, but now a lost body suddenly surfaced. Aren't you curious about the details? Body or not, we already solved that case. Lisa's body can't change anything now. And it certainly has nothing to do with us. I suspect the body was stored there rather than abandoned, due to the unnatural state it was found in. She was found frozen in a storage unit. Therefore, she looks exactly the same as she did when she disappeared. In fact, she's in such good condition that we can even determine the murder weapon and cause of death. Well... Good for you. Even stranger is how unbelievably beautiful she looks. At first glance, few would guess she was a murder victim at all. She looks more like a piece of art, or a mythological figure from a painting. This keeps getting better and better. Better and better? Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> a corpse as beautiful as a goddess. Sounds just like our story. Hmm. <laughs> yes. Yes. That went okay. Now I'm sure that Morgan's hiding something. I may be able to get what I want if we go deeper into the documents. You may be wondering why we decided to unearth all these old files. Everything happens for a reason. The moment Lise Clarkson's body was found, we did the best we could to start our own local investigation. But there wasn't much we could actually investigate due to the damage caused by the hurricane. Then we assume you also questioned everyone who worked in the warehouse. Of course. We question all the Clarkson Food Delivery Services employees who staff the warehouse and its owner. But we still have yet to obtain any key testimonies. Par for the course with a 14-year-old case, if you ask me. Mm. Not to mention how bad the timing was. 
Most of the employees were on vacation. So, you gave up on the investigation and came to see us instead. <laughs> Remember what happened, my fairy? That warehouse. That man. So incoherent. Such a pain. Hey, are you talking about... The guy who managed the vault where Lisa's body was found? Yeah, I think he started working there in 2005. Remember, Aaliyah? You said he was a pain to deal with, too. The large man, yes? Hmm. No need to answer. If you don't want to. I'm sure you've already put him under surveillance. Textbook FBI protocol. Who is it? This my fairy character you keep speaking to. You can't see her? Such bad manners. You barge into our apartment, yet you don't even care about who else is living here. Dissociative Identity Disorder. In the past, it was known as Multiple Personality Disorder. You were subjected to an internal probe only once during your career, correct? They suspected that you had DID, but you denied it and no problems arose during your test. Is this how you dealt with the psychological profiler back then, too? Saying strange things, weaving unrelated matters together, is that how you slipped through? You're free to draw your own conclusions, Belle. But my fairy clearly exists. She's been sitting right there, on your lap this entire time. <laughs> hey! Stop it. No violence allowed in here, Belle. Wouldn't want to scare my fairy, now would we? Isn't there someone else you should have talked to? Before coming to us. Such as... We were unable to reach Patricia Clarkson. You look surprised. I thought you already knew. After all, you visited Louisiana last week. We assumed you met with her during your time there. We haven't been to Louisiana, not in 14 years. Is that so? We've been right here in our apartment this entire time. That man is our witness. Aren't you, Simon? He's right. He didn't even take a single step outside on Christmas Eve. Which means that I didn't get to either. Are you positive about that? I took the liberty of checking some airline records. Last Friday, the name Billy Bishop was listed on a morning flight out of Boston. This is the fake name you used to use as an agent, isn't it? <laughs> A mere coincidence. Yet that's not all. That evening on the same day, a man with a large scar on his forehead allegedly purchased an 89 Cadillac from a small used car lot in Lucare. He reportedly said he wanted something old, big, and strong. The owner of the car lot felt it was a strange order, so it's stuck in his mind. Our world is filled with mysteries. And they always have the most bizarre timing. Incidentally, on the following day, an identical Cadillac was taken to a scrapyard in Trenton. Trenton, New Jersey. 
You can find that type of car anywhere. Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> Morgan's right. Everything happens for a reason. Even this messy room. There must be a reason for it. Especially when it comes to those strangely tidy spots. They're practically begging me to question them. Do you like fresh vegetable juice? Why would you think that? There's a juicer in your sink that hasn't been washed yet. And do I smell the faint fragrance of baked beans? You didn't use much salt, did you? What are you implying? You just told me that you find impending death to be intriguing. That confused me. When I look around your room, all I can see are the many ways in which you're resisting death. Poly-MVA treatment, highly concentrated vitamin C IVs, fresh vegetable juice, vegetable protein without salt, gallons of vitamin D milk for fat and calcium. The ambivalence, yes. What? Two contradictory emotions, mixing, coexisting together. An adult, mature mind is never satisfied with only one response. It's common sense. Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> Mr. Morgan. I found several spots in this room that look strangely clean. Did you tidy up a bit because you knew we were coming? Those are... sanctuaries. They've existed from the start. Sanctuaries? That's right. Sacred places. Hovels for pure souls, if you will. Were there originally objects in those hovels? Something you didn't want us to see? The soul's still there. We haven't touched a thing. But we know you can't see anything. Hey, Simon. Don't touch the sanctuary. Uh, s sorry. <coughs> That's a sanctuary. Don't ever touch it again. You've been watching us for four and a half years, and you couldn't even figure that much out. Uh, my bad. It's my first time actually coming inside, you know. <laughs> You're earning far more than you deserve, then. What were you doing all day in that black suburban? We thought wiretapping was your specialty. Don't tell me. Crossword puzzles. What do you think, my fairy? Four and a half years. All that time. And what does he have to show for it? <laughs> so. Crossword puzzles? No way. Come on, I thought you knew. I'm a Sudoku guy. Agent Jones. Oh, right. He's completely taking control of the conversation. At this rate, we'll never get anywhere. I need to press him some more. Agent Jones, did you find the files?
Mr. Morgan, do you recognize these files? Whoa! Ow! We told you. That's a sanctuary. Let him go! Assaulting an FBI agent is an obstruction of you. justice. We told you. Go. Down. Say back. Say back. Sanctuary. Down. Surrounded. Ah. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Morgan? Uh. I cut my finger with that can opener this morning. I thought I stopped the bleeding, but it seeped through. How could I be so stupid? Everything should be fine now. I'm sorry for being so careless. I made sure to read through your file and learn about your condition. The color red. Such an unusual thing to fear. Please, accept my deepest apologies. I... I'm sorry too, Morgan. I don't know what I was thinking. I'll never touch one of your sanctuaries ever again. And no more red, either. <laughs> Don't ever touch one again. I, I told... Now, may we return to our discussion? Oh, don't worry. I won't let them touch you again. Strangely enough, this man has a fear of the color red. And I believe that fear is connected to the Greenville case. Mr. Morgan? I'd like to ask you some questions about this case now. We don't. Want to remember that town. I'm sorry, but there's no way around this. I remember hearing about this case on the news when I was still a student. A high school girl named Anna Graham was murdered and the FBI stepped in to take over the case. I also remember it becoming a sprawled investigation due to evidence found in the victim's throat. Is that correct? After that case, you went on sick leave for two years. And when you returned, you requested to be switched over to desk work. What happened? That's a private matter. None of your business, Bill. 
Were you traumatized? Hmm. It's a common problem with prolific agents such as yourself. But there's another possibility that may make more sense. Perhaps you simply finished making preparations. What are you getting at? Thinking too much about something will always turn it into a problem. The Greenvale case. Don't you think it resembles the Lucare case? Read the report. We have nothing else to say. I just need one more push. One more thing that can summon up the past. The silver clock in that trash pile. Is that an H5? That's right. John Harrison's fifth chronometer. Completed in 1770. After many years, he completed it and presented it to the Board of Longitude in order to end their feud with him. That's only a replica, of course. You like clocks? Clocks are amazing. Prime fruit of the human race's intellect. We took the invisible idea of time and manifested it in these. Yeah, I love clocks too. Absolutely fascinating. I disagree. Oh? Why? Time is valuable precisely because it can't be seen. Yet nowadays people can't tell what time it is unless it's measured in numbers. Talk about idiocy. I don't mean to side with the Board of Longitude, but remember, humans used to cross oceans with the stars alone. We have our eyes to read moon charts and study the sky. We don't need clocks. What if it's cloudy or storming? All you need is courage and a love for adventure. <laughs> Hear that, my fairy? Courage? And a love for adventure? <laughs> Come on, Belle. Surely you know how many lives have been claimed by your pals' courage and adventure. <clears throat> hey, hold on a second here. That Board of Longitude thing, what the heck is that? I mean, I've heard of it before. I'm an FBI analyst, remember? I just sort of can't remember it right now. I know what it is, really. I'm telling the truth. Come on, Aaliyah, back me up here. Aaliyah? That's royal jelly. Huh? You were staring at the jar, weren't you? Do you find it strange that there's honeycomb inside? We wanted to harvest royal jelly in its most natural state. The queen's main food source, created from the worker bee's secretions. It's a perfect food, filled with power, meant to fuel the birth of the next queen. By absorbing it into our own bodies, we too can acquire that power. Incidentally, did you know that all the worker bees are female? No. Guess they didn't teach you that at Quantico. Male bees are only born to inseminate, and they're born from unfertilized eggs to boot. They have short lives and don't even get stingers. Sort of feels like a glimpse into the future of our society, wouldn't you agree? Women are gifted with the power to conceive, give birth, and nourish their children. But men, men are consumed with the job of providing women with the chance to do so. If women no longer had to rely on men for the seeds of life, 
they would soon cease to desire them, we believe. Be careful, Simon. <laughs> huh? Of what? Your bell's already stolen the reins from you. <laughs> Mr. Morgan, please look at this. What did we just say? We don't want to remember Greenvale. This isn't a photo from Greenvale. Look closely at it. Former Special Agent Francis Zack Morgan. This photograph predates Greenvale. It's from the Lucare case you worked on in 2005. Red. Red tree. Red tree. Yes. A red tree. Greenvale wasn't the first place you saw one of these. The Greenvale case and the Lise Clarkson murder case. They're connected by these red trees. Aren't they? Red trees. Answer me. What are these trees? Red trees. I want the truth. Tell me everything you know. <laughs> the red trees. You really did your homework. Well done, Belle. You're good. Damn good. Mm. Are you ready to talk now? I want to know what went down in Lucare in 2005. <sighs> Fine. We'll tell you. We'll tell you what happened in that town. Yes. It was that red tree. That red tree ruined my life. It was... <sighs> it was a sultry summer day. The sun comes down hard on you in the south. Like a torrential downpour of demonic whispers. It all started back in that sweltering summer. We still had our best friend with us back then. The other me. <laughs> My better half. When somebody needs you, you can't turn away You're their only lifeline, just a hero A bullet for hire, working alone Always a voice, a cry in the darkness An echo of pain that's been long forgotten But it haunts me My destiny To be alone There's a time when you see Life for what it's gotta be You should know they'll destroy Called to me to keep searching, walk alone.
Zack. Zack.